I am in Baringo County. I am under. Uh, I am a member of Dairy Value Chain Co Group, and it has benefited me a lot because every time I go around, uh, whenever there are meetings, we interact with other VCGs from other counties. We get to exchange ideas. We get to learn, and I'm happy because quite a number of uh, farmers from other counties have come to learn from me, especially after learning about the Foda Sogam, which has really assisted me. And they have learned, and I'm getting feedback from them that they are doing well. And now, in fact, we quite a number of farmers within my area are really going for it. They, uh, I'm a member of a uh, uh, dairy co group, dairy value chain co group, and I'm trying to lead by all means as an example. That is why I'm from time to time trying to improve, and especially when I go. When I interact with other farmers, I want to get new ideas, I want to learn more, so that I do an, a lot or I improve so that I can be an example to my own uh, farmers within my county and even other counties in this country. This uh, uh, dairy has assisted me. I have traveled far and wide. I have come to learn some challenges. I have gotten ideas or answers to some of the challenges I used to have, especially when it comes to feeding, because when you interact with other farmers, you get to learn, you get other uh, expertise from other sectors in forums, I get to learn how to deal with some uh, issues. I am even happy when uh, some time back I got to learn about a new crop called Bruceris, which is a fodder crop, and I'm trying to go for it. It has even assisted me. To learn that actually when you go into you want to go into business you have to have a good number of animals. Like for uh, we we were in a certain forum where why we did some statistics and we saw for uh, somebody to excel and commercialize in dairy farming you are supposed to have more than eight animals each producing 20 liters per day at least for the 365 or 305 days in a year. That is the time you can commercialize, you can say I'm in business, you can stop any other thing, it's just relax in your house and now wait to get money and feed and enjoy your family. Otherwise, when we talk of three animals, four animals, three, especially those ones who are producing six liters, seven liters, there is nothing you are doing. They are really eating up into your fourth eighths. So the best thing is actually to encourage our farmers. We rather have few farmers in this country who are actually doing large scale. And when I talk of large scale, at least on the lower side, six cows, each producing 30 liters, or eight to 10 animals, each producing 20 liters of milk per day. And that should be actually around the year. You know, we have challenges of uh, livestock actually, uh, just like other animals. There are some seasons when they are dry. That is to say for somebody to be in that position, actually you are supposed to have over 15 animals. So that when you are milking some, some are in calf, like the ones I have here, there are some which are on production now. There are some who are just, I uh, have some them the other day. There are some who are almost coming down. I have some avers which are not with us. There are somewhere else, which are also, uh, some are in calf, some are, uh, uh, are almost uh, being served. I have young calves, which are female calves. And actually that's a very critical area we need to analyze and see how to assist farmers as such. One of the challenges there is now when it comes to ma uh, breeding. When we don't have sex semen, you can, okay, if I, uh, unfortunately, a farmer can get bulls for five or three months consecutive, or for, for, for maybe the entire uh, lactation period. So you can imagine that farmer will not get enough female calves to replace the drying ones. Otherwise, we are encouraging through SDSB to see how we can actually subsidize the sex semen so that it can be a fail to farmers, so that we are, we are sure that we are getting more of female calves so that actually that uh, work I was telling you how that program of getting at least six to ten animals each producing over 20 liters per day can be possible so because at times an animal is drying after seven months you need to dry and then also we need to improve on the nutrition so that our animals don't delay on coming it because if you milk an animal for more than one year or six months before it is served then that program again will be distorted so we need to have healthy animals which come on it exactly after two months after delivery so that we get a calf each year so that we are sure that every time a farmer has enough animals 
lactating so that he or she can be in that position of getting over maybe 120 liters per day which can sustain him. Total number? How many are mm. Currently I'm milking eight animals. Two of them are almost drying up. And every time I've made, actually God has assisted me in such a way that actually my animals have been coming on it the way it is supposed to. So actually whenever an animal is exiting, another one is actually replacing it, it is coming down. For example now, the ones which are actually on production, I can say I'm relying on it, are six cows. Two of them are almost attaining seven months, and in the, by next month they'll be dry. And in, those, in, in that next month, two of them will be calving down. So they'll replace the two which are going to dry up. And of course also an advantage, maybe uh, I have some avas, two of them, which will be calving down in another four months time. Maybe I'll be milking a total of around 12 that time. And I know, God willing, I'll be able to meet what I've been saying. You need to milk around 10 to 12 animals so that you can actually commercialize in dairy. I want also to say and uh, encourage farmers, if you are to do farming well, you have to be linked with uh, financial institutions. Like me, I borrowed uh, some money for actually buying feeds, especially the raw materials and other uh, vaccinations from Borussia Sarko and Skyline because I'm a member of a uh, Sabatia Cooperative Society and we actually we can access and current us, uh, what guarantees us is the production. You don't need to look for somebody else to guarantee you. As long as you have your production, you can go to the institution, you work there, you are given your money, as long as your milk uh, record is doing well. Otherwise, I benefited whenever I have some itch on money, I rush there and I'm assisted. So every time I know I have somebody to run to whenever I am in problems. Mm. Through the many trainings through SDSB, I have learned and I'm now food secure in my home because actually I normally plant maize, not maize for own cons consumption. I do plant maize for silage and for even grinding direct maize to make feed formulation for my animals. In turn, after now getting my milk, I can use my money, the money now I get from the pay, pay, sale of milk to buy food for my family, if it is to buy maize and other types of food I need, I now have enough money to make my family food secure because of the dairy. I want to encourage farmers not actually to die so much uh, doing uh, maize planting, say, with the mind that without maize you cannot uh, sustain or feed your family. You can still give dairy, get money from the milk, and buy food for your family. Actually, when you look at the costs in card when you are actually making, uh, planting maize, it is too much. We've done, uh, through the many training trainings, there was a time we were doing some comparisons on various products or crops plant, uh, planted uh, by farmers in the various parts of the country. And we found that there are some crops which are actually eating up into the uh, pockets of their farmers. Not actually, make, they don't make any profits, but they do not know. Otherwise, when you are serious, I, I, so dairy is one of the uh, projects which can make somebody make money when you organize yourself well. You get good milk, you sell your milk, buy food for your family. There are so many other benefits we get from dairy. Like me, this farm you are seeing here, there is no one time I've used the inorganic fertilizer. I use manure, which is, I know, actually manure is healthy. We get healthy food here. My vegetables, my Kenya chimboga, I use um, yeah, manure. Even ba these bananas you are seeing here, the mangoes I have here, oranges there, I'm using manure. I even don't know how much uh, one bag of inorganic or uh, DAB is costing. Because me, I use manure which is a very good uh, advantage to me because I have dairy animals. Also the other day, when through the trainings we've had with the SDSB and other people, I've come to learn that we are supposed to be climate smart. Use of charcoal, use of firewood has not been of, uh, of any importance to us or it is causing a lot of harm to the environment. And I've gone for biogas. 
Now uh, my kitchen is very clean. I have uh, energy whenever I need to do whatever I want to do. It is very fast and it is because of the manure or the cow dung I'm getting from my animals. Otherwise I'm encouraging more women because I know going to look for fire is wasting a, a much of our time as mothers and women. So let us try to go into dairy so that we get uh, some of the benefits like biogas. We also be smart because when we waste the time going here and there looking for firewood, we don't do a lot of uh, value to ourselves. Otherwise, I want to encourage women like me, especially those who are not working. Me, I'm, I don't, I'm not employed by any institution. I'm working on my own, but I'm honestly telling you, if you can come home, what is actually shouldering or what is carrying most of our burden is the daily sector. As I have told you initially that my husband is a teacher and you know teaching as uh, not getting enough money which can sustain children through school. Otherwise, I want to encourage women as a woman are benefited from the daily sector and I'm encouraging more women to go into this sector and be aggressive in it. You will be, be able to actually improve on your livelihoods and make your homes comfortable.